So Prabhupada explained his own qualification very simply. I've not done anything personally very wonderfully. I am simply <coughs> serving my spiritual master, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, and all the charities in the specific succession. So the members of ISKCON should also feel that they are simply serving Srila Prabhupada. So all the gurus in ISKCON also should understand that they are voluntarily uh, accepting membership in ISKCON. So they also have to follow the authority of ISKCON and follow the rules and regulations and the managerial structure. Uh, so, uh, in this way we have a unity within ISKCON. Also, Prabhupada also talked about the followers. If you kindly follow my instructions and continue to push on Krishna consciousness, that will make me very happy. You must very strictly observe the regulated principles and chant 16 rounds a day, and Krishna will give you guidance. So I gave very simple uh, guidelines for how to be a member of ISKCON. So we also have some laws that have been passed concerning Guru. One is the choice of Guru. How do you choose a Guru? So the law states that it's a personal responsibility of the candidates for initiation to correctly decide by the exercise of their own intelligence to surrender to a particular devotee spiritual master. So in other words, they do not simply take recommendation from somebody. Oh, take initiation from so-and-so. <laughs> like that. Yeah? It's their responsibility to choose, not somebody else's responsibility. So they have to choose. Huh? So, uh, candidates for initiation should accept initiation from a spiritual master only after developing firm and mature faith in that devotee and his ability to take into the So, uh, they have to choose, they have to develop faith in that person. This is, of course, concerning Diksha initiation. Of course, uh, we can also understand that it's not necessarily the Diksha Guru who is going to deliver the person. It could be a Shiksha Guru also. Not necessarily a Diksha Guru. So another law is, no canvassing. ISKCON members shall not compel or coerce new members, members to accept any particular Shiksha or Diksha Guru or to take Diksha initiation at a particular point in time. So in other words, sometimes uh, the disciples of one Guru become very enthusiastic and start preaching to everybody to take initiation from that particular Guru. And new devotees may be, feel a little bit, uh, you know, forced to agree, even though they may not be so attracted to that person, but because so many people are saying, you have to take initiation on this person, and then they feel compelled to do so. So this is actually not proper. Yeah? Uh, the person should uh, be free to choose whoever he wants. So the problem comes up, well, see, new devotees are there and they're not very knowledgeable of how they're supposed to judge uh, who's, who's qualified. Well, that's a responsibility. You have to get some knowledge. <laughs> if you want to take initiation, then you have, so should have some knowledge and able to, so you can judge uh, who's the proper guru and whatever. Now, I said, of course, the basic uh, quality was there, surrender. One who is a devotee of the Lord, who is a sincere devotee of the Lord, surrender to the Lord, that's the main quality. Then you can say, okay, he knows a scripture very well, he has good conduct, etc. So, the qualifications are not too difficult to understand. Okay? So, the uh, devotee has to very carefully look at the proper qualifications, not the improper ones like age, race, uh, varna, ashrama. Those are all not the things you look at. <laughs> so, he has to look at the real things that is, the conduct, the knowledge. Uh, the realization, uh, loyalty to Iskan, these things. Uh, not difficult. Uh, so again, all members of Iskan have the right to accept Diksha Shiksha from the Guru of their choice, provided that the Guru was qualified and approved to initiate, the candidates are eligible to accept initiation, all the relevant procedures set forth in Iskan laws have been strictly observed. So there are also some details here about uh, what has to be done in regards. In other words, there has to be some verification that that person is being following strictly as a disciple for you know, so long period of time, six months or whatever. Yeah? And there's some little simple examination, written examination at the past also. And additionally, now we have this little essay <laughs> they have to read about the 
harmonizing the authorities within ISKCON, they have to read that also, and then we get tested on that. So there is some qualification for that candidate, the disciple. As far as gurus, there is a, uh, what some we call an approval system or whatever <laughs> in ISKCON uh, that goes on. It is um, based on recommendations from the local body, 10-man committee, they recommend a person to be a guru, first of all. Uh, that goes up to the GBC, submitted, if they recommend. And then if there's no objections, uh, less than three objections, after six months, then they, they're approved. That's the present system. Okay? So, uh, in this way, a person becomes approved. Okay. So, what are the types? As I mentioned in the beginning, we have the Shiksha and the Diksha Guru. So we'll talk about Diksha Guru. Diksha Guru, you only take one Diksha Guru, not many. And his particular function is to give Krishna Mantra, not Hare Krishna Mantra, because we get that before we even do anything. Like on the street, you can get it and chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Somebody tells you to chant, you can chant. So that's not given at initiation as such. What is given actually is the uh, deity mantras at the second initiation. That is what the Krishna mantra means here. So that is the function of the Diksha Guru, to give those mantras, which are secret mantras and you don't give to other people. You don't speak them loudly. Uh, he should be knowledgeable of the Sampradaya teachings and should have good conduct, etc. Straightforward. Now, there's a verse here, which is used by the Ritviks also. <laughs> Divyam jnanam yato dadyat kuryat papasya sankshayam tasma dikshati saprota deshikais tatva kovidai ato guram pramanyaiva sarvasram vinivedicha griniya vaishnava mantram diksha purum vidanataha. So, usually this first verse is recited, it's, uh, or quoted. It's also in the Nectar of Instruction and a few other places as well defining what Diksha is. So we have here two uh, concepts. One is Divyaganam, or transcendental knowledge, spiritual knowledge. Uh, so through the process of Diksha, one gets this spiritual knowledge. And uh, what happens? Tapasya Sankshayam. Sankshaya means complete destruction of sin. So these things take place in Diksha. So actually, just like we have mamsa, meaning me and he, so diksha stands for di, for divyaganam, and ksha for papasya uh, sankshayam, chayam of uh, papa. And uh, we have to see the next, what is important is the next verse. Because if you simply take this, that means that it is a diksha guru who just gives you ganam and uh, destroys sin. That means a Shiksha Guru doesn't give <laughs> transcendental knowledge and doesn't do anything. And the Holy Name doesn't do anything also. It means only the Diksha Guru gives it. So Diksha Guru is put on a very high platform. In that case, if we take this uh, definition literally, take this first verse. But we see that uh, even Ajamil chanted the Holy Name and destroyed all of his karmas. Without having even bhakti. <laughs> What to speak of initiation? There's no bhakti even. Just accidentally, all those karmas got destroyed. So papasya sankshayam is not such a big deal. It's not restricted to diksha itself, actually. And divyaganam obviously is there with shiksha gurus because if they're not giving transcendental knowledge and they're giving material knowledge, why would we take knowledge at all from them? <laughs> so they have to be giving transcendental knowledge also. So uh, therefore, we take the second verse also. Hmm? What does the second verse say? Therefore, one should offer respects to Guru, offer him everything and accept Vaishnava mantra according to the rules while taking Diksha. So, Jiva Goswami, so what we have here is spiritual knowledge, and with Bhakti, 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 and destruction of sin. As we know, what is the first quality of Bhakti? Klesha means destruction of Klesha. Klesha means karmas, desires, avidya, ahankara, etc. So, all the sins get destroyed by Bhakti. Not just by initiation, but chanting the holy name, worshiping the deity, seeing the deity, pulling the rati after cart, taking prasadam. It all does. It all does this. 
So, uh, Jiva Goswami is also given a little explanation here. Divya Gyanam hi atra tri mati mantre bhagavat srup gyanam tena bhagavata samanda vishesha gyanam cha. So, what does that mean? Divya Gyanam is knowledge of the form of the Lord and knowledge of one's particular relationship with the Lord in that sacred mantra. So you get a, a Diksha mantra from the Guru which has the name of Krishna in it and a relationship with Krishna. So usually there's Krishna and something Namaha. Okay? So we offer our respects to Krishna which means we are the servant of Krishna. We serve Krishna. So we get the form of the Lord, Krishna, and we get our relationship. We are the servant. That is what the mantra gives us. So that is the Divyaganam. And this knowledge helps destroy sin, karma, etc. Uh, so it comes in the mantra. So there are other ways of getting the Divyaganam and the destruction of sin. The holy name is non different from Krishna. It also destroys sin, destroys karma, and it is also Krishna, and it has a relationship with Krishna. We say Hare Krishna means, please engage me in the service of Radha and Krishna. <laughs> we have a relationship with Krishna there also. <laughs> huh? So the holy name does the same thing. Huh? So, what is this? Why do we get the mantra at all? Actually, it's for deity worship. And mainly deity worship is for rich householders, so they can spend their money on something useful. <laughs> Instead of spending it on their house, let them spend it on building a temple for Krishna. <laughs> so, this is what uh, this is a direct translation of uh, Jiva Goswami. Mainly for rich householders doing deity worship, to take diksha. So, why? Because only with the diksha can they get the mantra. Only with the mantra, you're doing pancharatrik archana. Uh, if you don't get that diksha, you're not considered to do proper puja. Uh, so when you're doing the uh, uh, bathing the deities, etc., we have we recite these mantras. Uh, so this is proper pantrajika puja. For that puja, you need the diksha. So rich householders can do that because they got money and stuff to spend, and uh, they can do nice deity worship. 